Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining. And if you're not new here, um, thanks for coming back. It is Monday and technically I should be with clients right now, but I've been sick this weekend, so I haven't really been feeling myself yet. And I don't want to risk bringing any germs into the clinic because we work with a lot of kids and a lot of mothers there are either pregnant or about to have a baby. So I just wanted to stay home just to be extra careful. I have some tea with me and I decided to make a video since I had the time off anyway. Okay, so for those who are new here, I am a speech pathology graduate student and I go to Towson University and I literally graduate in one month, which is nerve wracking and exciting. <laughs> anyway, once we graduate, we are supposed to embark on our clinical fellowship year, AKA CFY. So CFY is when we are either gonna be working full-time or part-time at a job, and we will have to obtain 1,260 hours and a minimum of 36 weeks to be able to apply for a full certification. During this time, you're gonna be having a temporary license, and once you're done, you're able to finally apply for your permanent license. So in our CFY, we will be finally getting paid. I'm very excited for that. And we will also have the chance to have a mentor as well as we continue our careers in this field. So before we even begin the CFY, there's so much we have to do. And for Maryland, we have to register and pay fees for our temporary license. And I noticed that the fees are pretty expensive and there's a lot of physical documents and contracts that you need to get before you're even able to send an application. So it's a lot to do in the process. So that's for Maryland though. I'm not sure about any other states. So if you are about to go on a CFY journey as well, or if you are thinking about this field, definitely look into your state's um, CFY requirements. Before I start, I did want to say I did sign a contract for my CFY, so I will already have a job once I graduate, which is very exciting and nerve-wracking, and I'm excited to finally talk to you guys about it. I mentioned it in my Praxis and Comps video because I was also applying to jobs while I was studying for that, which I don't recommend doing that. But yeah, so that's what I was doing and I'm finally excited to talk about it. So I'm gonna be working in a private practice that's like 25 minutes from my house, um, depending on traffic, but I'll be working in the pediatric population. And I know that the clinic that I'll be working at was very excited that I might have the opportunity to work with feeding in my placement now. So I think that really helped me get that job as well. So like I said, I applied to places very early on. So when I was taking the comps and praxis, that was around late December and January. So I applied pretty early. I just felt like I had to confirm something very early on. And I just felt like there wasn't going to be a lot of opportunities out there. I don't know why I was just freaking out. So all of a sudden me and my friend just started to apply to things and that was pretty hectic. And now I'm here. <laughs> so I really thought there were going to be fewer opportunities as the months went on closer to graduation, but I realize it's kind of the opposite. So right now there's a lot of people looking um, for CFY placements and a lot of people are hiring. So if you're supposed to graduate in May like I am, I would say you could probably start applying two months ahead or maybe do what I did. I feel like a lot of locations wait until closer to graduation. So you're gonna be seeing a lot more opportunities closer to the time you have to graduate. So that's why I recommend maybe researching two months ahead of your graduation. I will say it's a lot easier for people who are trying to get pediatric placement or if they're trying to be in the school um, there are many opportunities out there, but if you are looking in the medical field, it's very competitive and very limited in the options. Um, so if you are looking to do the medical field and you're going to start applying for your CFY soon, I would say apply early and research very early as well so you can see who is taking CFYs and who's not. Also, if you are applying for a medical field, I want to warn you guys, do not be surprised if you do have to move locations due to the competitive nature of this placement. I'll just say there's a lot of states and areas where there's only a few medical opportunities because a lot of you know, medical placements aren't really taking any clinical fellowship students and are mainly hiring people that are already in the field. So that's why it can be limited and you might have to move. 
So this video is gonna be all about how I chose my CFY, some tips and advice for if you have to choose it, and what I learned in the interview process. So first, let's just get into how I chose my CFY. So like I said, I was choosing very early on, so it wasn't a crazy amount of options um, that I saw, and I was deciding between contracting, um, working within a school district, or um, at the clinic. So when you get into the CFY process, there's gonna be a lot of companies contracting, um, and I will recommend that you do your research about the contracting companies because there can be a lot of companies that are really large and are really hard to communicate with and it's going to be harder for you in your CFY to have a mentor and to just know that people are there for you. So just make sure you are interviewing with a good contracting company because a lot of them can be kind of sketchy. So in a contracting company, you are going to be paid hourly and it's going to be a lot higher of a pay compared to working in the district or at a clinic and if you're contracting for a school you're not going to be paid the days that you're not directly in the school so snow days holidays you're not going to get paid for that for contracting you're probably going to have to bring in materials yourself rather than going to the location and knowing there are already materials for you to use. So if you work directly in the school district, you are going to be paid annually. And it's gonna be a set rate for everybody once they start. Um, you are going to be given better benefits than other places, depending on the county. Um, you will get paid for the days off and you will be able to be closer um, with the school team because you're going to be there all day and you're going to be working with them directly and really socializing with them Whereas with contracting it's more of like, you know, go in see a client and leave it, You're not going to really be staying there and doing other duties where you'll be seeing other team members early on I decided I didn't want to do contracting just because I wasn't going to be guaranteed the school or the population I wanted to work with and I was going to have to start worrying about buying materials already. And I just didn't want to worry about that yet. <laughs> also, I checked out the benefits for one of the companies. And although I don't really need it right now, since I'm still on my parents' insurance, thankfully, that's very nice of them. But I just realized the benefits that they were choosing weren't as great. And if I decided to stay with them, it just wouldn't have worked out for me. So at this point, I had to choose between a clinic or the district. So I ultimately chose the clinic I'm working at just because they have a really great mentorship program. They had a cohort system, so there would be a cohort above me that worked two years, maybe three years, and I would be able to work with them as well as my supervisor just to bounce ideas off of. And they were so willing to train me in skills that I was not as good at, which I really needed for being this early in the career. I also knew my supervisor would be in the same clinic with me, so it would be great just to be able to go up to her and ask her questions since she's in the same area. And also the owner of the clinic was really good at answering his phone and answering my questions. And he also told me that he would be dealing with all the billing. And I don't know if you found out yet or not, if you are also in the same boat as me and going to graduate, but billing can be very difficult and it's very easy to get billing wrong. So that's why I'm thankful that I'll have someone to help with billing. So I ultimately chose this clinic for the mentorship and I still feel like I don't know a lot, even though I've learned a lot, I feel like there's a lot that I don't know. And if it was up to me to be alone to decide what treatment plan a client will need based on their needs and wants, I just feel like I'm not amazing at that yet. So that's why I would love to still have people to talk to and make sure I'm doing the right thing. So at this clinic, I will be paid $29 dollars per hour so by the end of it it will be 60k a year and they did tell me that i will be paid for documentation and if a client doesn't show up but i will say that is a lower pay for me and i feel like the pay for this field was emphasized a lot and i feel like we were promised so much higher than a lot of us are given right now so you know i just kind of wish i negotiated the pay so i could make a little bit more, but I do know that it is my first job. So you know, I'm still getting money at least. And I'm still at my house with my mom, my stepdad. So 
it's not terrible for me to have a lower pay right now. So guys, my start is technically supposed to be in June, which is very nerve wracking and it's coming up very quickly. And I'm a little freaked out because now I feel like I might need a break in between, but I already signed and I already, you know, told them I would come in June. So now we just gotta get through it. I'm very nervous to have to learn the ropes of a new place and meet whole new people, but I'm excited to take you guys on the journey with me. So now that I talked about how I chose my CFY, I'm gonna talk about the interview process and what it was like in my experience. So from my experience in my interviews, and remember the placement setting I was applied to, so it was, you know, clinic contracting, um, it was very laid back. I was pretty much asked questions about what I wanted to work with, um, my experience, and just other things along that line. So it just felt like a discussion between two professionals and them trying to give me the best experience that I was looking for and making sure that I was the right fit for them as well. So during the interview, I was able to ask a lot of questions and I loved asking my questions. I always had a question for any company and I would also always email them with a more question. So I would talk to people and then they might come up with a question. I'd be like, that's a great question. And now I'm gonna ask them. So I asked a lot of questions. Everyone that I interviewed with was very willing to answer the questions and were more than happy to discuss with me about their answers. So the interview just felt like a discussion and it was very easy for me. The clinic that I signed with, they told me they were mainly looking for personality. Um, but they knew that they could train anybody in the skills that they needed for their clinic, but they just wanted to make sure that we had the personality to fit the clinic in the team. So that's what they were mainly looking for. For contracting, it was really quick and easy. Usually contracting companies love new SLPs. They love anyone doing a CFY. I don't know why, they just thrive on it. So they honestly will try to take whoever is willing to join the team. So the process for the contracting, I basically just had a phone interview and then that's when they would just send a contract over and say you could either sign or not. And we would just keep having conversations over email. And then at the clinic, I had a phone call interview with the owner, which was kind of nerve wracking. And then I was also able to go into the clinic after that interview and I toured the place and I met the team and I asked more questions. Now I can't say anything about the school district interviews just because I was able to skip that process since I had an internship in the county. I am assuming it is similar to what I had already experienced. Now I'm gonna say if you're looking for medical interviews or adult placements, I am Seeing a lot, I am seeing from a lot of people that it is harder, it is a longer interview. Might ask you more intense questions based off a case study or give you a diagnosis and say, you know, what would you do with this? So I'm just gonna say the medical interviews are more intense and if you're doing medical, just take my experience with a grain of salt um, because it's so different. Also, I'm gonna say it really depends on who you are talking with and how strict or intense the company is. Okay, so since I talked about how I chose my CFY and the interview process, I'm now gonna just tell you guys some tips and advice that I think would be beneficial for your CFY journey. These are tips that I've learned from other professionals, so in my experience, and also from other girls in my cohort. The first tip is to negotiate. The places you apply to are typically given a range of numbers for the salary they are going to provide, and they are mainly going to be sticking to the lower side of that range. But if you ask, they are going to be willing to go up to the higher side of that range because it's still part of that range and it still works for them. Professor mentioned that you could ask on for sign-on bonuses since it is expensive to get your license and go through the process to be a CFY. So a sign-on bonus would help, but if you do get a sign-on bonus, it'll probably come with um, a criteria that you have to stay with the company for another year or stuff like that. My professor also said you could try asking for help with gas money. If you are traveling a lot, they might be able to help with those fees. Now I know it's scary to negotiate, but I'm telling you right now, 
please negotiate. <laughs> you deserve a higher pay. Something that's helpful for negotiating is getting written text and written contracts from other places that you've applied to. So you can take those numbers and give it to a place that you really want to work at and say, hey, this is what I've been getting for other places. Are you able to raise your salary to be as competitive as others. And I will say that typically works because it shows you did your research and you know what's competitive. I have seen a lot of girls in my cohort negotiate and get higher pay than they were provided with initially. So that's why I'm saying it's totally no harm to negotiate for a higher pay. I'll also say you can join different Facebook groups regarding salary and see what others are getting paid in your area just because we know it varies on the state and where you are in that state. And I joined SLP Clinical Fellows, which is a Facebook group, and I've seen multiple people post about what they were given initially when they signed with a location and if they recommended it as a CFY for anybody. And then they mentioned where the place was that they were working at. So tip number two, ask a lot of questions. I promise you they are going to be willing to answer them. If they want you on their team, they are gonna be straight up with you and direct about what they're looking for and what their answer is. This is your first job, so you really wanna make sure you are set on the place you sign with and you know everything that they have to offer. Some example questions I would ask companies is, do you get paid if a client doesn't show up? What are your benefits like? Uh, what is the typical caseload number or percentage of productivity? Um, what is your paid time off looking like? Do you have materials there or do we have to bring materials? And is there a mentor on site? So those were some of the examples of questions I would ask and I strongly recommend asking the people that you interview with as well these questions. So tip number three is to research places and ask others about their experiences. Research everything. My favorite was going on Reddit and researching CFY experiences to see what worked for others and what red flags I should look out for in a CFY. I also went through Indeed and tried to find reviews from other employers at that same site. And then I would also ask my old and new supervisors about their experience with different locations and if they knew anyone that worked there and if they liked it and stuff like that. Mostly asking my supervisors and others in the field was very helpful. It's really helpful to ask others because more often than not, they will have advice and let you know, oh, like, I heard this SLP really didn't like this place or, oh yeah, I heard that one was pretty great and they have great documentation. So that's why I'm saying to just ask whoever you can. So tip number four is to try not to compare what you signed with compared to others in your cohort. It is a one-stop shop for either being jealous they got something better than you or making you feel like you might not have chosen the right place. Every experience is going to be different. Every place is different. And I can promise you everyone is looking for something different for their CFY. So you might be more keen on mentorship, but someone else just might be looking for a higher pay. I will say it's helpful to ask others about what they found during the interview process if they interviewed with the same company or location. And I'll say the only time you really should compare is comparing salary. So if two people applied for the same place and went through the interview process, it's really beneficial if they talked to see if someone was given a higher pay than the other one so that the other can negotiate a higher pay and vice versa. So tip number five is to try to tour the location you will be working at. I know with contracting and schools and maybe even medical placements, it's a little bit harder because you might not know where you will be until you start but touring the location you work at will help you determine what feels right. I really wasn't sure about the clinic that I signed with until I went there in person and I was able to see the team working together and collaborating together with clients. And I was also able to see the different rooms and all the materials they had. It was just great to see how big and spacious the location was. It just made me feel better about going there. I also really liked that they had a lot of windows and they had a lot of materials. I will say I know I really wanted a place with windows because the placement I'm at now, they don't have a lot of windows and the therapy rooms we are in also don't have windows. My eyes always hurt because the building is just relying so much on bright 
lights compared to natural lighting. So half the time at the end of the day, I have like a headache and I'm just tired because there's just no natural lighting. Okay, so tip number six is after an interview, you should email the person you interviewed with and thank them for their time. Even though you might not sign with them, it is great to continue building connections and have connections with others in the field. Once you email them to thank them, they will know that you are a professional and a respectable person. So if you ever try to work there later on in the future, if you change your mind, they always know that they can work with you and that you would be a good employee for them. So tip number seven is to not be so hard on yourself during this process. I know I was making myself way more stressed and anxious than I needed to be. Through my research on the internet and in the field, I have seen a lot of people that did leave their CFY early on and move to another location and it totally happens. Um, just remember you are always able to move around and find the right fit for you. You don't have to stay at a place after you're done with the CFY. You are okay to leave and find something else if you didn't like it and it's totally okay. And also if you didn't get the place you wanted, that is also okay. Just remember you can always build up your clinical skills with another location in the meantime and then you can try applying again in the future once you do have a buildup of clinical skills and are able to show them that you really know what you're doing. So the last tip I have for you is to not ignore red flags and to trust your gut. You are going to be able to tell if a place is going to be helpful for you in your CFY and when it won't. Just please trust your gut and you will know when you want to sign with the place. You do not have to sign with the place if you notice a lot of warning signs and a lot of red flags. There are going to be other opportunities, so don't make yourself go through something if you know it's going to be bad. <laughs> so that's all the tips I have for you guys and I will be adding links to videos and websites down below and these are going to be links that I found helpful in my CFY and links that other people felt beneficial to them as well. I hope this video had a lot of helpful information for you guys and as always if you have questions just message me or put them down below. I have a fun time replying to comments. It's fun for me so just ask me anything. As always thanks for joining me in my SLP journey and just seeing where I'm at and checking in. I will see you guys whatever the next video might be and it might be in Costa Rica. I will be going there after graduation and I will be filming it because Costa Rica is really pretty and I feel like everyone needs to see it. So the next time I see you guys, it might be in Costa Rica. <laughs> guys, till next time, bye.